All right, so now in this video, we're gonna look at the basic properties of the NPN bipolar junction transistor. So this is a 2N2222, actually it's a 2N2222A, you won't be able to see the numbers or letters on there, but it's an NPN bipolar junction transistor. And so we're gonna look at the basic properties of an NPN bipolar junction transistor. To begin with, the pins, looking at the flat side here the one on the left is the emitter middle is the base and the right is the collector we're going to turn it this way put the emitter to ground that's where two current paths combine we'll look at that later the base that's where we input our signal which goes to ground and the collector which takes the current that we are controlling by setting the current to the base that goes to the collector and then to ground so we will just plug it in there so I have three jumpers that attach to the three pins flat side facing to the right so now we're going to zoom back and set the meter to measure current so to begin with we're going to be looking at very low amounts of current so we're going to set the meter to two milliamps make sure the probe is set in the milliamp spot. When we are done, we need to make sure we go back to voltage and set the meter to measure voltage because you risk blowing a fuse if you accidentally measure current when you mean to measure voltage. So the meter does not handle high amounts of current very well. So in any case, we will turn this on. And so this resistor goes to the positive rail, goes to the jumper, which goes to the base of the transistor. So actually, let's pull that one out first and get this one. This is a 100,000 ohm resistor, 100 kilo ohm, and a 5 volt power supply. So normally we expect about uh, 500 uh, thousandths of an amp of current, which is the same as right there about the 0 0.05 milliamps so that would be 50 nanoamps there's a little loss though voltage wise with the base of the transistor base to emitter of about 0.6 volts especially at really low current so there you can see it's about uh, 0.6 volts less so we lose about 60 uh, nanoamps so zero 0 0.044 milliamps. Anyways, that's the current through the base to emitter. Now that sets the current. We need to raise the current that the meter can measure to be safe. Let's go to 200 milliamps of current. So now we're going to look at basically the gain of the transistor. How much it amplifies collector to emitter current based on what the base to emitter current is. And first off, we got to connect the resistor there so it's not open anymore. So now the current is flowing. The collector to emitter, we're going to have to complete the current path through the meter so that we can measure the current. But in any case, you got to be really careful doing this. And uh, we're down to about 11.2 milliamps. And so we can set this to the 20 milliamps or less to get a bit more accurate of a reading. But there you can see it is quite a bit more than what we had before. And if we did the math, we could see the exact value. Now also you notice as the component heats up, it's letting more current through it. So this is why you don't see circuits like this. The transistor is not very reliable like this. And temperature changes, other changes, it, it uh, makes it so in this case it's conducting more, which is dangerous if you're near the range the maximum range because it's going to start conducting more and be uh, giving you more than you expect so in any case we're gonna remove the 100 kilo ohm resistor to the base and now put a 220 kilo ohm resistor to the base so we had 11 plus uh, a little more milliamps now we should be down towards about 5.5 milliamps in that range actually a little bit lower because this is a little more than twice the resistance so probably about five milliamps 
and there you can see 5.3 milliamps of current so it's about half because it's about twice the resistance so we have about half the current going through the base 2 emitter so we're going to have about half that current go from collector to emitter so now I have this resistor up here this is a 100 ohm resistor and it's about the lowest value resistor you want to put directly across 5 volts but let's look at the current we have here 5.2 and uh, again it's going to start going up a bit as the component hits there you can see it's pretty much spot on the exact same amount of current because right now the resistor so right now the resistor is not even in the circuit the transistor is limiting the current and right here again the transistor is what's limiting the current not the resistor the resistor is dissipating some of the power making it a little easier for the transistor but ultimately the current that we have set is based on the the current that we have set to go from collector to emitter is based on what we set from base to emitter so now that wraps up the demonstration part of this video just be aware that the gain is not predictable so you don't build circuits based on gain which is kind of annoying because that's really what you learn about the transistor first is gain but you don't know how to build circuits with it there's a lot of circuits the first one should probably be the transistor switch NPN bipolar junction transistor switch where you take advantage of the gain in a controlled way so you learn about these different circuits and just be aware about the gain you have a small signal going from base to emitter controlling a larger amount of current going from collector to emitter that's the main takeaway the main thing to know about transistors and as you learn circuits and different uh, values of the transistor such as the gain amount and the maximum current that it can allow through and some other things you'll understand the component better and better with each circuit you build so thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one